Hey, it's me here. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a really easy way to do complicated UV mapping in Blender. I figured this out completely myself. I don't know if it's ever been done by anybody before. But, okay, so what I have here is I have this somewhat complex object that would be hard to UV map normally. Um, and I'm going to make it easier to UV map. This is especially good for beginners. So the programs I'm going to be using is, of course, Blender. I'm going to be using Inkscape. This can be downloaded free from Inkscape.org, or you can just Google it, and it'll be on their website. Just Google Inkscape, and that's all I'm going to be using. First thing you want to do is you want to have some sort of somewhat complex object in your blend file. Next thing you want to do is tab go into edit mode which is where you'd model it in the first place so make sure all your all, everything's selected by pressing A you might have to press it twice if there's anything selected at first but anyway let's get on with it you hit U and you just hit unwrap uh, let's go to the UV editor down here you just hit unwrap ah, I already had texture loaded in um, if you just go on to unwrap it unwraps it it normally would unwrap it just as a square, but if we hit U, U, then we'd hit Smart Project, and that it wouldn't give us that. If you get a cube, you just do U and Smart Project. Anyway, now what we want to do is we want to go to UVs, Export UV Layout. I've got a special test folder for this. I'm going to just save it as text test.svg and save it over what I already had so if I um, if I open texture test.svg can X out of this which is what I was just figuring this out with um, we have this right here and here's the part that makes it easy to do your UV layout First thing you want to do is you hit Control Shift L, and then next thing you do is you drag out and select everything. Hit Control X, add a new layer and call this Geometry, so that way we can easily hide and show it. And hit Control V to paste it in. You just change the X Y coordinates. New. No. Control Z. Okay, we hit ch change the x y coordinates to zero. Just leave everything else the same. Um, next part of this, this is the this is the actual part that makes it easy to do. Um, what you do is choose just a nice font, and kind of just count your faces. If you have a lot of faces, what you want to do is instead of just using letters, which I'm going to do, you can use like one a. Okay, so we've got our thing here, and what you want to do to make this easy is you just type in a. Click B, C, D, and just keep on going. And if you have a lot of faces, what you do is you go like A1, what? So I'm just going to keep going through this and just fast forward it through. Okay, so um, we're back. On here, uh, we've named each individual face. Now, what you want to do is, if you'd have like a sphere or an applied sub, just make sure you don't apply subsurf modifiers before you do your UV layouts, because then it just gets ridiculously hard. But anyway, what you'd want to do is, if you had like a sphere or something for every little, for every like bunch, for like each half of the sphere or cylinder or whatever you just put one letter so like each bunch of squares there because it would be really annoying to have to put like font size one in like each little tiny face um but anyway next part you do is you have your layers tab over here and now you can show and hide the geometry what you want to do now is you want to export this and it should export it to the same place as you had your UV layout saved. So I'm just going to replace what I had earlier. And if we go over to 
Blender, we can have our. Ah, wait, no, I don't want to do that. Image, open, textures. No, wrong place. Um, you just want to go to your texture that you made, and now you want to tab out of edit mode and have a, have a material made for whatever thing it is hit new texture over in your textures tab I'm using blender 2.5 if you haven't noticed yet but anyway um, then you change this to image or movie and image texture test dot png um, okay so now what you want to do is where it says coordinates right here you want to change it to UV if we go in here and we change the viewing mode to textured we'll see that we've got our labeled faces so let's say we want to have a nice line that goes D all the way kind of curves up to G that would be much easier now so can't really see many other faces anyway well, like that's a face R, which is down there, and that's face P, which is right there. Anyway, to continue, what you do is you go through back to Inkscape or whatever you're using, and you just use a calligraphy, and then you just kind of draw whatever. Oh, um, what? Actually, no. You want to create a new layer, put it below the current, and just call this text, as in texture. And you want to lock your geometry layer, and on your geometry layer, you want to change the opacity down to like that. Then you go back to your text layer, make sure it's not locked, and just draw your line. Um, now you just what you do now is you just hide the geometry layer and you export your bitmap export oh, no. export yes I want to place that just make sure whenever you export it you have page selected or else it'll be really screwed up now what you want to do is on your texture here there's a little refresh button you refresh it and your texture shows up here and that's how to do kind of more complex easily do complex UV mapping in Blender let's render it and see what it looks like um, this isn't highly recommended for doing like finished rendered imaging because you, well, for finished render and imaging, you don't want to use PNG files. You just want to save it as a JPG and export it or convert the file or something. But that's it. I think um, I might something that might be use. Um, oh, I know what to do. For where down here at image sampling, uncheck the use alpha. Now if we render it, yeah, there we go. And that's much better. But I hope this helped. And see you next time. Bye.